zinc, aluminium, copper, silver, iron ore, oil and gas are the building blocks of the modern world. Without them, life as we know it would be impossible. With a footprint spanning four continents, Vedanta is one of the largest producers of natural resources in the world. Copper is where it all began for Vedanta. Today, Vedanta is a leading global player in copper. With its multiple present-day uses, copper plays a critical role in contemporary life. Aluminium has been called a perfect material, touching our lives in the most fundamental ways. Vedanta is India's largest producer of this most versatile of metals, aluminium. Silver is a key element in digital connectivity. 95% of India's primary silver is produced by Vedanta. One of metal's unsung heroes is zinc. Zinc protects and extends the life of steel. Vedanta is one of the world's leading integrated producers of zinc and lead. Oil fuels the drive behind modern economies and lifestyles. Vedanta can oil and gas is one of India's leading independent energy majors. As India's largest iron ore producer, Vedanta has set a precedent in environmental concern, transforming a used mine site into a beautiful horticultural park. We at Vedanta are fully committed to explore and to develop these resources in the most sustainable manner. This will be a game changer for the economy and will create millions of jobs and eradicate poverty. I am committed to build a culture, not only the company, a culture built on trust, working together in harmony for the greater good. For me, business is not about accumulating wealth, it's all about giving back to the society. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Manisha Son, welcoming you all to the launch event of Extract, Vedanta's Median Day School Case Challenge that aims to provide a platform to the best of the minds across India who are determined to rise and transform the future. I would like to start with a big congratulations to all the participants who are joining us today as you have been shortlisted for the second round of this case challenge. At Vedanta, we encourage dialogue with senior leaders, mentors, and peers in any capacity possible. Upholding this practice, our senior leaders are here, us, are here with us today to share their insights on how the change makers like you can crack the extract. We want this session to be very interactive one and hence, please share your questions, views in the comment section below. We would try our best to answer as many questions as possible during the end of the session. Before I move on to our esteemed speakers today, I would like to share Chairman's message where he's very pleased to see you all taking a lead to be part of Vedanta's family and joining hands in our mission to not only make India self-reliant in natural resources sector, but also to eradicate poverty and uplift communities. With this, I would now request Ms. Priya Agrawal Hebar, non-executive director and anchor for ESG brand and communications, along with Mohit Taneja, head of brand, to share the strategic overview of Vedanta's vision and growth journey with you all. Over to you, Priya and Mohit. Thank you, Manisha. Thank you for the introduction and really, really happy to be here. Congratulations to all of you. Um, I, I'd like to take you a little bit um, through a little bit about Vedanta, about uh, Vedanta's story, why, why Vedanta exists and why it's so important for a company like Vedanta to exist for all of us. Um, Vedanta is a diversified natural resources company, as you all know. And it all started with a dream. 
um, in 30 years, that dream has come such a long way that many companies have taken generations to, uh, to come. And so I'd like to say the chairman is solid proof that hard work, dedication, and passion can really make dreams come true. And I think all of you here are on that journey. All of you here very evidently have that passion, have that dedication. And, and, and the one thing that I can, I can definitely or firsthand tell you that it's all about the drive and the energy and the passion and, and, and your dreams will definitely come true. Um, a little bit about Vedanta. Vedanta is one of the largest diversified metal and mining companies with interests in aluminum, copper, zinc, lead, steel, oil and gas, power, and many more, with operations spread across India and South Africa. Um, we play a key role in the nation's development by reducing India's import de dependency and helping her become self-reliant. Um, one thing I'd like to say is that, you know, to all of us, sometimes minerals, mining, natural resources seem so far away um, and or so distant. But well, in fact, when you wake up every morning, the day that you spend, the cars or the vehicles that you travel in, or the laptops that you use, or the mobile phones that you use, everything is rooted in natural resources. And people tend to forget that. Um, the importance of natural resources is evident in all of our daily lives. And, and well, everything above the ground, everything that you see above the ground does come from below the ground. So one thing that we have to be very, very mindful of, um, even though uh, one thing that we have to be very, very mindful of is responsible growth. I think um, because this is an industry that is fund that fundamentally shapes the world as we know it, every part of our lives um, and what we consume is made possible because of metals and minerals. We have to ensure that um, you know, we have to ensure that this growth and, and what we do being so necessary for the for the world um, around us, we do responsibly. Um, you know, and, and I think that's something that's embedded in Vedanta's culture, in our DNA from when we um, from when we began. Vedanta has always been a company that has believed in giving back and being responsible and being responsible. Um, our CSR programs is a testament to this. Last year alone, we touched the lives of 42 million people through our, through, just through our CSR activities and have the bold vision to take that number to 100 million in the next few years. Um, we've been working tirelessly for the past few years to embed ESG into our DNA. We find ourselves in that point today in history where industrialization has caused significant impact on communities and the planet. Large companies such as ours have a central role to play. Through conscious, informed action, we can eliminate the negative impacts we cause to our environment and make a real positive difference in the lives of our communities. It gives me immense pride to share because of this, that a few weeks back, Vedanta launched its new uh, renewed ESG, um, ESG strategy driven by a completely repurposed vision. This strategy brings in front and center the purpose-driven approach that Vedanta has always aspired to follow. Um, so staying close to our roots, our tagline, apart from Desh Ki Zero Tukle, has been transforming elements. And now we're, mo we're modifying that to transforming for good. Um, this is not an ESG tagline or just an ESG tagline. It's a purpose statement. It's the statement for the entire organization, ensuring that ESG is hen henceforth embedded in everything that we do. ESG basically means that every single thing that we do the, you know, the way we care for our people, the way we care for our environment, in our day-to-day -day lives, every single thing that we do, we do with a sense of care, with a sense of responsibility. And we want to ensure that each and every um, family member of Vedanta, you know, uh, imbibes that within them. Supporting this purpose, we have three, um, we've, we've created three very, very strong um, statements, transforming communities, transforming the planet and transforming the workplace. These pillars are further indicative of Vedanta's steadfast commitment to become best-in-class company and at the same time ensure that our communities and the larger society also ben benefits with our presence. As we take this transformational journey, we are bound to face challenges and that is where young, talented minds such as yourselves can help us tackle these head-on with innovative and out-of-the-box solutions. I'm really looking forward to your fresh perspective and hoping to see many, many of you in the grand finale. We, we truly will, uh, we were truly, truly very excited about this initiative and, and I'm very, very excited to see um, what turns out of this. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Uh, thanks a lot, Priya, for your time and address. You have been constantly inspiring the teams at Vedanta to scale bigger heights and establish stronger connect with all our stakeholders. Good evening, everyone. It's an important day for us at Vedanta as we launch our first campus st case study challenge, Extract. So I'm going to take you through the philosophy behind Extract, a little bit about the organization, how we came up with this name, what's going to be the structure of the whole program, the case study themes, and most important, what's in store for you guys. So let me give you an insight into the scale and size of the campus association that we have. Vedanta does its campus hiring from close to 150 campuses across the world, national and international. We induct about 1,000 freshers every year. We are an equal opportunity employer and strongly believe in diversity and inclusion when it comes to gender, geography, or community. Campus hiring constitutes for about 85% of our total hiring. So as you would guess, it's very, very critical to us. And that's one of the reasons for extract as well. So what's our expectation from this program? The key expectation would be to attract and spot quality talent from top campuses and induct them into our workforce. And also to establish a brand connect with you guys at campuses directly so that you get to know more about Vedanta. So why the name extract? So if you anatomize the word, the suffix part strat is right from strategy. And that's what we are looking for. People who can put the right strategy to solve everyday business challenges. And the prefix X is basically the X factor, something that differentiates. So if you, if you have it in you, welcome to Vedanta. So what's going to be the structure of extract? So we conducted the preliminary quiz round, which has already been completed. So we had about a total registration of about 6,000 people. Uh, the total teams that register were about 2,000. And number of teams that will be taken forward from here would, are about 284. Today, we are having this case launch session. This will be followed by a case submission round, wherein the teams would be required to submit about a five to six slide PPD for the proposed strategy or solution. This will be followed by a virtual presentation round, wherein 30 semi-finalist teams will present their games to the esteemed jury, and that will be a virtual session. We'll also have master classes wherein the top teams will be assigned mentor to help enhance and further build on their cases along with interaction with experts from Vedanta. And then we'll finally have our grand finale wherein the national finalists will present to the senior leadership of Vedanta for the championship title. We'll have cases based on three themes that we'll be talking today, which is on oil and gas, ESG and finance. So the million dollar question, literally a million dollar question, because that's uh, that's what's there up for grab, more than a million rupee in cash rewards. So what's in store for you? The winning team gets five lakh rupee as a cash prize. The first runner ups get three lakh. The second runner up team gets one lakh. And then each campus team winner would get about 22.5K. The winner team will also get a chance to visit our business sites, have a gala dinner with a top leadership, apart from receiving the chances of a PPO, which we or do offer in our MT and VLDP programs that we conduct on campuses. So this covers it all from my end. Thanks a lot, everyone, for your time and attention. We'll end it here with the saying, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Welcome to Vedanta Extra. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priya and Mohit, for sharing Vedanta's larger vision and mission with the participants along with our vision with Extract. I'm sure everyone is more motivated now we will now move on to the uh, next round of this session, which is the case launch, starting with oil and gas. We have Mr. Hitesh Vedya, Deputy CFO, and Mr. Rana Kar, Chief Marketing Officer at Gain Oil and Gas. During the session, if you have any queries, please share them with us in the comment section. Over to you, Hitesh and Rana. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, glad to be here. I'll begin with a brief background on Cain Oil and Gas which is a business unit of Vedanta Limited. But before that, let me first begin by providing some data points to ponder over. Number one, India imports around 85% of its crude oil and around 50% of its gas requirement. At the current prices, the crude oil import bill is expected to be over $100 billion. By 2030, India's crude oil consumption is expected to rise by 50% and natural gas consumption is expected to rise by more than 200%. Given the sharp consumption growth and large import dependency, Kane plays a pivotal role in India's energy security. Now, Kane 
the oil and gas business is India's largest private sector oil and gas producer. Cane produces around 25% of India's domestic crude oil. The vision of Cane Oil and Gas is to produce 50% of India's domestic volume. This will propel India's journey towards Atmanirbhar Bharat. Increasing domestic production shall ensure energy security. It shall lead to reduction in import bill and consequent forex outflow. In addition, 70% of the revenue from domestic production of crude oil and gas flows back to the government in form of various levies and taxes. This can be, de this can be deployed by the government in boosting the infrastructure as well as generating employment. To deliver this vision, Kane has a rich set of portfolio spread across the country. We have 58 oil and gas blocks spread over 65,000 square kilometers. Of these, Four are producing blocks and balance are exploration blocks in the prolific basins. Over the last three, four years, we have acquired 53 out of these 58 blocks. Till date, Kane has made more than 50 discoveries across basins. Discovered in 2004, the Mangla field was the largest global discovery of the year and India's largest onshore discovery in more than two, three decades. Kane has produced till date over a billion barrels of crude oil equivalent with capex spent in excess of $10 billion and the contribution to exchequer in excess of $30 billion. In terms of technology, Kane has been a pioneer. The technology deployed at Kane not only helps the organization find and commercialize new oil and gas fields at a low cost, but it also helps to recover more resources from existing fields. Kane has taken number of global firsts till date. Uh, to give an example, we built the world's longest heated and insulated pipeline stretching 700 kilometers from Rajasthan to Gujarat. We have also built the world's largest EUR project. Our business supports the lives of people around our operations and millions of people get directly and indirectly impacted by our business. Our current production rate is around 170,000 barrels per day with a very low operating cost. Our CapEx plan for next three to five years is to the tune of $5 billion. And the three, the three key levers, if you ask me, which will propel our growth are increasing volumes from our producing fields through enhanced oil recovery techniques, exploration across our vast portfolio, and shale, which is expected to be a potential game changer, not only for us, but for the country as a whole. Now, moving ahead, uh, over the last you know, three years, we have focused a lot on gas production, which now represents, say, around 20% of our volume. Government of India is also targeting to increase the share of natural gas in the primary energy basket to 50 per, to 15% by 2030 from current around 6%. And in this uh, vision of the government, Kane is going to play an active role. What I'll do now is hand it over to Rana to, to, to talk about our case study, which is focusing on this gas business. And, and it's going to be very pivotal in Kane's growth as well as the country's growth. Over to you, Rana. Yeah, thank you, Hitesh, for giving an overview of the oil and gas sector. Uh, firstly, you know, um, thank you all participants for joining the launch of Extract on behalf of Vedanta and Kane. Uh, it's a real pleasure to speak to you. Uh, and uh, I will take the next five minutes to, you know, give you a quick um, summary of, of the case study. And the way we will deal with it over the next few minutes is I will try and explain to you the the business model of Kane, which Hitesh actually touched upon quite well. Then we will say why we are actually working on this case study and help you understand why it's real and present for us. Um, we'll talk quickly about the deliverables uh, that we expect uh, as an outcome of this case study. And then, you know, the X part of extract, what are the additional things we expect from, from you um, and which we believe will make a successful case study, right? So, as Hitesh very clearly said, you know, and Ms. Priya also talked about, um, oil and gas is obviously very critical for the economy. And you have by now understood the critical role of cane um, um, in this industry. Um, as, as an organization, we, have, we, have, we are a material player both in the oil and the gas side. Oil clearly almost 25% of India's domestic production, but also a very material player on the gas side. Now, this project or this case is really focused so that you are clear on the natural gas business we have, which is about 20% of our volumes. Now, 
today, uh, as we speak, uh, we are, we participate uh, as Kane. We really participate only in the upstream side of the business, and and we essentially what we do is we produce we uh, the gas and and we deliver it to our customers, and that's basically the source of our revenue model. Um, gas, unlike oil, as some of you would know, is not really fungible. And therefore, it's very important um, that we do day-to-day -day management of the physical as well as the commercial chain to ensure that sales are assured for us every minute of the day, right? So why are we doing this project? Given that we have access to you know, significant production, obviously, the expectation now going forward is that we, we look to expanding our natural gas business and add value to the business. And as part of this work, we obviously want to review um, all opportunities across the chain, not just upstream, but from upstream to downstream, and also look again with a fresh pair of eyes at value-added products. So this is the real, the real rationale behind why we are not looking at this case study. In terms of the deliverables, um, you know, it's all out there in the in the case study paper. But essentially, we look at the work in three bits. The first part is obviously we expect you to do a some work on the market analysis where we expect you to identify opportunities across the business value chain. And then, um, you know, essentially having, having mapped the opportunities across the business value chain, we expect you to look at their market potential. And then on the basis of this work, we expect you to then go ahead and prepare a short list of three to four opportunities and rank them using a very clear methodology. So we understand the logic behind it. And then eventually, the last bit and the main piece really is to then create a short business case for your top opportunity. So that, in essence, is a deliverable. And before I end, you know, just so that it helps you, we'd like to probably, you know, just summarize by saying, you know, what are the additional things that you could be working on so that you, you can come up with something that, that makes a great product and a great outcome for all the effort that you put in. So... I would be careful here because I don't want to constrain your thinking, but some pointers to help you out. Think about working on this through a very clear analytical framework. Do lay out your assumptions as clearly as possible. As you, as you go through your evaluation process, make sure that you are consistent with the analytical framework that you have highlighted. Um, work on a comprehensive framework to rank the opportunities. And hopefully, you know, then at the end, um, Try and give us a clear sense of the tools that you use uh, for us to make sense of the doability as well as the materiality of the project. So in terms of doability, you know, look at all possible um, aspects, work on the industry structure, look at the SWOT analysis, um, look at the risks and the mitigations, and do look at the success factors, the key success factors. And, and do end up uh, with making an attempt at the financials so that we get some sense of the materiality and the timing of the opportunity. So that, in essence, is what we expect out of you. Hopefully, that gives you some, some sense of what we expect out of this case study. With that, thanks again for, for being here. And I'll pass this back to Manisha. Thank you so much, Hitesh. And uh, thank you so much, Rana, for those key insights. I'm sure it would help the participants to structure their case studies. Um, moving forward, we present you Mr. Ajay Goel, Group CFO, and Mr. Anupam, Group Financial Controller at Vedanta, to share key factors which will aid you to solve uh, the case challenge. So over to you, Ajay and Anupam. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Anupam Kumar. I play the role of Group Corporate Controller at Vedanta Limited. I'll give you a quick overview of the finance vertical and the culture at Vedanta. Uh, it will give you a flavor of um, the finance case also. Uh, of course, no discussion on finance is complete without talking numbers. So here it goes. Our market capitalization is $17 billion. And that makes us one of the top 50 companies in the country. Uh, and with the case that you will have, our expectation will be that you will help us uh, push up higher in that ranking. Uh, our quarterly EBITDA is approximately 10,000 crores coming from eight different businesses, you know, stretching from mining to manufacturing and everything in between, for example, power generation. Uh, if I look at the last year, we contributed close to $4.5 billion to the exchequer just in the last year itself. And if I stretch that to the last maybe 10 years, you can multiply that easily by a factor of 10. 
We are also the only country uh, company in the country that was listed in three jurisdictions, India, UK, and the US. And hence we have the unique experience and knowledge of engaging with investors and regulators in three key jurisdictions. These are of course very large numbers and we have an equally large team to deliver these numbers. The finance function begins at the top, uh, which is to spearhead the governance of the organization overall. And then it branches out into key roles of, uh, let's say financial strategy, accounting, reporting, budgeting, planning, treasury, investors relation, taxation, secretarial, you name it. So the whole span of uh, enabling functions within an organization. We have about 600 people across these functions with close to about 45% diversity in our teams. Uh, we frequently recruit from uh, best institutes around the world. We have a very high performance culture, which believes in empowering our people and encouraging new and innovative ideas. Uh, our, pla large, our large platform allows us to take on large projects, right? If you have a large scale of operation, you can em embark on really large uh, uh, projects and uh, set high goals, whether it's in operations, finance, or in automations. We are typically the pioneers to adopt uh, the latest technology and the softwares. The scale and size is truly enormous. And I encourage all of you to read our annual report for FY21. Uh, I'm sure this will give you significantly deeper insights about our organization that we can maybe uh, maybe not be possible to, for us to cover here in one go. Uh, with that, I'll now pass on to our group CFO, Mr. Ajay Goyal, who will speak to you about a finance case study uh, specifically. Over to you, Ajay. Thank you. Thank you, Anupam. Hi, everybody. And uh, thank you for joining on a Saturday evening. I'm sure uh, you have uh, many more appealing options on this day. Uh, so, so we got a very, very interesting uh, case study for you. Now, this case study involves around uh, corporate valuations, around uh, mergers and demergers, dealing with the board of directors, dealing with the investors and value unlock. So the case study has all the elements of a high cognitive corporate finance. Now, as you heard uh, from, uh, from my colleagues, that uh, Vedanta is a multi-business conglomerate. So we got uh, aluminum, oil, gas, iron, steel, zinc, power plant, uh, copper, and uh, much more. So Vedanta is a truly a bouquet of flowers. We are not a cauliflower. So, so the exam question in the finance case study is around conglomeration, wherein multiple lines of uh, businesses are housed under one large entity. Does that reflect right market valuation? Does a large corporation with the multiple lines of businesses uh, shows the right market value for the company? That compared to say a reverse conglomeration wherein you have multiple smaller listed companies, each with one single line of business. So aluminum is a different company. So is oil and gas. So is the iron and steel. And each one is listed. So does the sum of the parts is more than the whole? That is the key before us. Now, all of us know that the cost is a fact and the valuation is a perception. Right valuation, I think, is just a point of view. One can look at uh, one tangible metric, and as you would know, what we call is a price to earning ratio, PE ratio. Now, if I give you some data point, uh, it's, it's a finance uh, audience, uh, most of us, Vedanta's price to earning ratio is 11 times. So, so our, our stock price is 11 times than our earning per uh, share. So PE ratio for Vedanta is 11x. Now you compare that uh, PE ratio with other companies which are comparable. If you look at overall BSC Sensex average, India's top 30 companies from market cap viewpoint, the average PE ratio is about 28 as on November end. Now does deconglomeration creating a multiple companies lead to value unlock? Or is it just a figment of imagination by investment banker? Somebody may ask. Now, I can think of uh, many examples of late, and I'm sure you also are reading it uh, in the media. GE, a uh, US multinational, recently announced trifurcation. So they will go into three companies now uh, around aviation, energy, and healthcare. I can think of many examples. Uh, for example, Johnson & Johnson, uh, one more case recently. Uh, Shell uh, is a third one I can think of. And finally, Toshiba from Japan. If you come near to home, uh, do we have Indian examples? Yeah. I would say many, and that will last uh, eight, 10 weeks. Uh, GSW announced uh, something similar. Uh, Piramal, I can think is one more example. So, so, so we do, we have actual examples where deconglomeration lead to value creation. 
Now, one more argument can be that around multiple entities lead to simplified structure. Uh, it also lead to tailored allocation of capital and finding the right partner for the company. Now, somebody may also argue otherwise uh, at a large corporation has a balancing advantage. So if one line of business, say for a quarter or for a year has headwinds, the other businesses may come to rescue and support all resources and specifically the cash flow becomes fungible under one large corporation vis-a-vis -vis deconglomeration. So, so what is the task in front of you? I mean, you can, I'm sure, read that uh, paper which is given to you. Now, you are part of a committee that is appointed by board of directors to make a thorough study based on data and research and advise the company on the way forward. Should we look for a large conglomeration that we are right now? Or we should look at restructuring, we should demerge, we should look at a split structure, in which case the value will be unlocked. The value already exists, the value is like now latent, it only gets unleashed. What tools do you have in front of you? Many, I mean, we are a public company, you can go on Vedanta's website, uh, look at annual report, look at our investors communication, many presentations, and data is all in public domain. And you should show us in multiple scenarios, does the restructuring helps in the value unlock. So net net, uh, this whole exercise will be truly an intellectual treat. So if you see multiple solutions for the same problem, then this exercise is for you. So if a large mass of data does not bother you, then you will for sure enjoy it. So let us decode, let us extract. Is the sum of the parts more than the whole? Thank you and all the best. Thank you so much, Ajay. And thank you so much, Anupam, for the strategic direction on the case studies and the overview of Vedanta, uh, finance function at Vedanta. Uh, for any queries in finance, please share it on the chat box and we will take it up during the Q&A session. Moving forward, ESG is a part of our DNA at Vedanta. We strongly believe and take initiatives to transform communities, planet, and workplace. To give you an overall perspective on our second case challenge based on ESG, we have Mr. Rajinder, who is heading HSC and Mr. Gaurav Saru, Director ESG at Vedanta. Over to you, Rajinder and Gaurav. Thank you very much, uh, Manisha. Uh, so guys, welcome you all to the Vedanta Extract and I'm very happy to be part of this session and welcome you all again. So as you know that one of the session, uh, one of the case study we have uh, put up as part of this uh, challenge is on ESG and sustainability. So before my colleague, Mr. Gaurav, takes you through the details of this whole case study, I'll just like to take you through some of the components of what does the sustainability in ESG means to us. As you have also heard Priya uh, speaking, who is director and leading the ESG uh, from uh, front and handholding it, it across the Vedanta sites. So the larger aim and purpose for which we all are working within Vedanta is transforming for good. And when we say transforming for good, as Priya said, three pillars, transforming communities for good, transforming the planet for good and transforming the workplace. So it comes with an ethos of, you know, working together for people, planet and prosperity. And that has been our fundamental uh, from the time, you know, chairman has envisioned, envisioned the Vedanta story and he strongly believes and lives in it. And he, believes in giving back to the society in everything we do. So this is not just mere a uh, statement per se, because everything now, what we do in Vedanta from the grassroots level to the topmost uh, rank of people and management, we align our activities with these three pillars. And to support that, each of these pillars are actually backed up with a strong measurable matrices, which we have committed ourselves that whatever we do, we will look around that whether how does we contribute to each of the buckets of these three pillars? Not only that, we have also committed that when we show our progress on year on year basis through our sustainability reporting transparently, we will also tell the world that how does the needle is moving in all of these matrices, which is very, very important for us at Vedanta. So I'll just take you through some of these uh, key matrices or the target which we have decided for Vedanta team together and these targets are set up not by somebody from top it is all decided through a lot of workshop which in which all the employees from the grassroots level to the leadership on the top across all our business units have come together and decided that this is what 
ESG and sustainability means to us. This is where we will work together. So when we talk about transforming community, we talk about taking all the responsible business decisions, keeping community at the center of each decision. That means whatever we decide first, whether it is good for the community, whether it is good for the nation, as Priya also said that, you know, our strong, strong belief is that building Atam Nirbhar Bharat. So that's where the first fundamental approach is. Anything we do, we first check whether it is uh, whether it is for the betterment of the community or not. Second, we are talking about empowering about 2.5 million families with our with enhanced skill set, providing them job opportunities within and also outside, making them employable across the industry. We are also talking about uplifting about 100 million women, children through education, nutrition, healthcare programs. And I must tell you, not many companies in globally in metal and minings have such a large vision and targets to support the communities to such a great scale. These are few of the marquee projects which, you know, with the vision of chairman we have been running across Vedanta. Coming to the second pillar, which is on transforming the planet. There are four, three commitments. Uh, one is around the making Vedanta net carbon neutral by 2050. And this is, I'm sure you must have also seen many uh, announcements made by Vedanta side by side when the class at Glasgow, you know, all the global leaders were working together on in COP26, that how do, how do they, you know, act to ensure that this world, which is common for everyone, is sustaining this uh, two degree uh, rise in temperature, limiting up to two, two degree rise in temperature. So we have also committed that we will be net carbon neutral by 2050 or sooner. Second aim is around the net water positivity. So what does this net water positivity means? We believe that, uh, you know, industry to survive needs water and community also needs water. And this is one of the area where we want to liberate all the fresh water for the communities around making sure that, you know, we do not negatively impact any, any uh, communities around our industry. So we have already Hindustan Zinc, which is, you know, which have achieved net water positivity, 2.4 times water positive. So this water positive means that any drop of water we use within our industry, we actually replenish back either through the rainwater harvesting or using and recycling the wastewater or some of the marquee project, which you will not find uh, many in India also, that setting up sewage treatment plants in the larger cities like we have set up in Udaipur and using that you know, treated wastewater, which find no use in the community and releasing fresh water for the community. That's something which we are working around and we have committed that we will be water positive by 2030. Again, very unique commitment, not many industry will find speaking of this language. Last aim on this transforming the planet is around the greener business model. So we are looking at all such possible interventions through which, you know, we can diversify into those portfolio, which brings this world towards a faster traction to the, you know, sustainable world. So whether it is about transition to hydrogen, we are looking at it, whether it is transitioning to renewables, we are looking at it as part of natural carbon, net carbon neutrality, whether it is about circular economy and ensuring that how does the waste reduction, uh, waste generation can be reduced or waste can be used as a, you know, as a circular economy within the industry as a raw material for other industries. That's where we are committing to put R&D and also all our interventions to look for such possibilities. In fact, our case study is also around that. The last pillar is about transforming the workplace. And when we say transforming the workplace, first thing comes in our mind is about the people who are working with us. We want them to go back safe and healthy. So that's our first commitment in the workplace. Second, we talk about the gender parity, diversity, inclusivity, not only for the gender, but also for the transgenders and many other aspects of the inclusivity we are looking around. And we have strong uh, targets to be you know, shown progress around each of these uh, aims. Last is about the governance. We actually commit to the strong and ethical governance in Vedanta because everything what we are committing can see the day of light if there's a strong governance around each of these things. And we commit to that. Uh, behind this scene and to make sure that this is working, we have a strong, strong governance system put up across Vedanta, which is chaired by you know, the board level uh, ESG committee. And then it is uh, again led by Priya and our group CEO, Mr. Sunil Dugal, who are chairing the ESG Mancom. 
and then there are a series of transformation of the office at vedanta level and at each business level which continuously reviews what are the various projects we are driving to make sure all of these nine aims are actually not only met but we are actually exceeding the commitment made on these nine aims as we are talking we have more than 1000 uh, projects in chain which is around all of these nine nine aims being reviewed being ordered being executed on ground and these numbers are increasing because as i told you the transformer offices are specifically reviewing through the leadership team that how we are moving ahead as part of our commitments within the vedanta so these are some of the things which i thought before we take you through the esg uh, case study so i will request uh, gorav to come forward and you know uh, take you through the details so gorav please thank you rajender and uh... Welcome once again to everybody on the call who's participating with this very very exciting program. I think we're going to see some very good ideas and uh, uh, future case studies and business leaders emerge from this. So, as Rajinder was saying, ESG is fast becoming center stage for how Vedanta does business, but it's also um, a way of managing that is critical for any company looking to. be, be uh, a leader in the corporate space uh, in the future now now how companies essentially manage uh, risks around environment and social factors will determine how they take on leadership positions but you know esg is not just about realizing uh, you know it's not just about mitigating risks but it's also about realizing the opportunities that uh, lie in this space after all if we go to become a better greener more equitable world as uh, we all desire somebody will have to go out there and build that world for us and as a natural resource company we are very well positioned to do that you know we end up playing as priya was saying in the beginning and you uh, you must have gleaned from what um, Hitesh and Rana and Ajay and Anupam talked about our various businesses. We play a very critical and central role in how these things will be shaped. Now, what we'd like you to uh, to tell us, and this is what the case study is also about, is what role should Vedanta end up playing in this green a green economy that's emerging? Right? Should we? be a business that that starts to diversify into new metals we all know that as we become a green economy and there's renewables and electric vehicles and hydrogen all of these things coming in place the role of aluminum copper nickel cobalt all of these th- metals will become more and more prominent so should we venture into new metals that's one question that we often find ourselves asking should we venture into new business lines so metals and power and oil and gas has been where vedanta's made its uh, fortunes and but should we look at new opportunities in hydrogen in fuel cells etc etc so what is what are the what are those emerging areas or should we look at completely revamping our business model so we are essentially miners but should we look at urban mining should we look at recycling and uh, going and finding uh, recovering metal from scrap etc so and there could be many other such examples that um, emerge as you start to deep dive into what a mining company of the future looks like now the other very critical element of sustainability slash esg thinking and um, you know i think it's important for every every participant in the call to realize this is not a stand alone initiative right it's a way of doing business and that's what priya meant when we when she said the change in our trans, uh, in our tagline is about making sure that we imbibe this in our dna so uh how we do bu- uh, business in the future is also about how we communicate with our stakeholders uh what are the interactions we have what kind of dialogue we are able to establish and so as we are building the new um natural resource company for the 21st century what is it that our interactions with stakeholders should look like what should we be communicating to them how should we be amplifying the uh, growth plans the company has what should be the inputs that we should be receiving from them what are the 
uh, channels and methodologies that we can use. So all of those pieces become part of what a ESG leading company looks like. And at the heart of it, obviously, is that it has to make fundamental business sense. So the, the roadmap that you suggest for us, it needs to have a thorough financial analysis. You need to be able to tell us and calculate what the impact of your proposed strategy is going to be on the company's top line, on our bottom uh, line and profits, as well as on the valuation that we might see from investors. So uh, that, in a nutshell, is the case study. Now, uh, and, and an obvious uh, starting point for you would be Vedanta Sustainability Report. It will give you a very, very good sense of what we've been uh, doing so far. Um, if you look at our recent announcements in the investor section of our website, you will see where we plan to head. And Rajinder has already outlined that very, in very detail. So take a look at all of that. Look at what's happening in the world. Look at what the other mining companies are doing. Uh, look at where the opportunities are from a customer standpoint. Uh, look at how regulation is going to change. All of those things become part and parcel of what this new metals and mining company looks like. So um, you've got a lot of work to do, but I think it's going to be very, very exciting. I think we're going to probably see very, very interesting ideas emerge from all of you. So. Good luck, and I'm really looking forward to what comes next. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rajinder and Gaurav. It was indeed very insightful to hear you both. Uh, we are really looking forward to seeing how innovatively and sustainably our change makers will share their ideas for the ESG case challenge. So all the best to you guys. We will now move forward to the Q&A session, and I would request all our leaders to be on the screen and um, we have received uh, a lot of questions and i was just filtering them out and one question that came uh, for cane oil and gas and i would like to direct it to uh, mr hitesh ved uh, so the question is uh, is cane looking at downstream expansion in the foreseeable future over to you hitesh okay thanks ma'am thanks Manisha. I think uh, you know from a from a from a business point of view, right? Of course, you know uh, downstream ex uh, expansion is an option, right? Uh, which which is always there, uh, and there also we'll have to look at you know whether there's an opportunity for you know greenfield or brownfield. Uh, so so you know if something you know it comes up which which is value for money, which is value for stakeholders, right? And if if it helps you know to to grow the business, why not? And as I said earlier, you know in 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 when I was giving the context of the oil and gas industry. In India, the consumption is anyway going to grow. So, from a downstream point of view, uh, the market is there. But I think the more important part, you know, which from an upstream part, which we look at it is that you know India has uh, on on an overall basis, uh, uh, we are we are a net exporter as well as as, as far as the downstream products are concerned. And and as far as crude oil is concerned, we are we are a large importer, right? So 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 unless you know we become self sufficient in the crude oil or gas, right? We will always depend on 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 imports, which is going to be a drain on our economy. So so the investment or the capex you know, allocation which we are looking at as of now is more on the upstream side because that is only you know going to help country to become self sufficient, and and that's why uh, the focus uh, you know is on 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 upstream finding more oil for India and and developing the nation. Thanks, Manish. Sure. Thank you so much, Hitesh. Um, I mean, that wonderfully sums up the um, answer to the query that was asked to us. Uh, the next question uh, I would like to direct it to uh, Mr. Ranakar. Um, the question is for oil and gas case study, are you looking for expansion opportunities in India or you're open to international opportunities as well? Over to you, Rana. Yeah, uh, thanks, Manisha, and uh, thanks for the question. So. So for the purpose of this case study, I think to contain uh, the work, we would say focus on um, India opportunities uh, for the purpose of this case study. And there are three, three broad reasons. One, Hitesh talked about how we are so dependent on crude oil imports. What's not always talked about and not always understood is that we're significantly dependent also on natural gas imports, right? More than 50% of our gas requirements are imported. So, so as we see in this business, this 
there's a clear requirement to grow the natural gas business in India. So there's huge opportunity out there. From a market perspective, if you have been reading what the government has been saying, the government's target is to take uh, the share of natural gas from 6% to 15% by 2030. That's a big number. And that just opens up huge scope for, for expansion in the sector. And we'll, we expect a lot of investments, and we want to be part of that. And thirdly, do remember that you know uh, we do seriously talk about Atmanirbhar India. And when we say that, we obviously, you know, it gives a lot of focus um, in terms of what you want to do um, um, within India, for India. So given those three, three broad pointers, we would say that for the purpose of this case study, try and stay within the ambit of domestic opportunities. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Thank you so much, Rana. I think uh, that uh, that just gave a clear direction uh, for our participants to structure their case studies. Um, the next question is uh, for finance, and uh, I would like to direct this question to um, Mr. Ajay Goel. And the question is, uh, we see Vedanta growing aggressively in the last 10 years. And uh, what is the growth plan of the company in the coming five to seven years? No, it's, it's a wonderful uh, question. Uh, You're right. Uh, Vedanta has a history of uh, growing uh, both organically and also inorganically. So if you look at our first half results uh, from April to September, and uh, data is in the public domain, you can look at uh, Vedanta's website. So in the first half, we grew almost uh, 50% on the top line. And our profitability, EBITDA specifically, you know, is about uh, 98%, so almost double. Uh, I can't think many companies uh, in, in the current environment uh, growing a uh, top and the bottom line with this kind of uh, magnitude. So as a company, our focus remains on a couple of basic areas. The one is a volume, volume augmentation, and second around the cost, cost compression. And Vedanta remains uh, worldwide, the top quartile in terms of cost leadership. A couple of more priorities, if I may share, deleveraging, uh, which basically means we end up uh, reaping our debt and make our balance sheet stronger is one priority. ESG, you heard from my colleagues, uh, Rajendra and the Gaurav, uh, ESG is not just a compulsion. Uh, it is for us a conviction. So company will do disproportionately on the ESG front. And finally, governance, you know, in terms of uh, what we say and what we do. So overall, we'll keep uh, growing. We'll stay the course in terms of uh, growing both organically and inorganically. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ajay. I think that perfectly uh, answers the question. Um, uh, so I think a lot of um, uh, us, who, the participants, they are really looking forward to be uh, the next CFO in, in their career. And uh, hence the question to you, uh, the next question to you, Ajay, is uh, what does a CFO look in a financial report? Well, I would say many things, you know, when a CFO looks in the financial report. Uh, first and the foremost, uh, perhaps, uh, is, is performance training. So how the company is uh, doing so versus uh, last year. How are we doing? I think the more important against the business plan and our business plan is a true entitlement of the current year. Uh, second area that we all look into is our variance analysis, what we have committed and what we are delivering. So and what we call in the corporate world, the say do ratio. So what do we say? Uh, what do we commit and what do we deliver? A CFO also looks in the financial report uh, around opportunities, you know, what we can do more. And uh, uh, opportunities always remains a journey, never a destination. And finally, in summary, uh, depending upon what report you look at, eventually all CFOs look for data, convert data into foresight, and convert those foresight into actionable insights. So data to insight is what CFOs look into in the financial reports. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Ajay. I'm sure a lot of us over here um, uh, in the B schools are, are surely going to take a note of it and they're going to be the future CFOs. Um, uh, and we would love to have them the CFOs at Vedanta itself. Um, so yes, the next question to you, uh, Rajinder. Um, how Vedanta is planning to onboard B school candidates on its ESG journey and what is it uh, is something they are expecting um, from the students? So that's the question. Yeah, so I think it gels very well with the you know case study which we have put up actually, and uh, we are definitely looking uh, for the B school candidates to come on board and work with us. And as the case study says, you know we are actually wanting you guys to come and tell us where Vedanta should move. You know if it's about sustainable world, so we are ready to you know 
commit to it that any opportunity where we can help india where we can help global globe as a whole to you know participate in this green economy we will like to be front runner and that's where you guys are only working on this case study that's one second you know it's all about how we do work it's the way we do work sustainability is that actually and uh, to drive this whole within the business and with such a huge target which we have taken we need a lot of people with a lot of background into finance to drive you know how does we get this all initiative funded we need a lot of guys from you know various streams maybe it is from social interest maybe from uh, environment interest maybe from uh, uh, safety health hr or the commercial background because when we talk about sustainability it's not only what vedanta alone is trying to do it's it's more of the ecosystem we are trying to build and it's a larger canvas with, with which we are working on so when we are talking that any vendor we are working with who is working with us whether he is sustainable or not whether he is also having policies which sustains which which actually supports the global uh, sustainability agenda or not so that's the bigger canvas and we are looking forward to all 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 uh, b school candidates to come and drive this change third we are also have you know very recently made lot of uh, uh, wants within the organization uh, where we are looking forward to the bldps uh, candidate to come forward and help drive these communities of practices we have 12 communities of practices which support this whole esg agenda which is around biodiversity which is around you know a circular economy which is around water which is around uh, people which is around the communities we have around which is around the sub- responsible supply chain which is around the you know uh, diversity and inclusion so there are a lot of communities which are working within the uh, vidanta as a subject matter expert and they are actually bringing thoughts from global benchmarks and infusing the knowledge and also the direction into the company so that we not only look at what footprint we have which we have to actually uh, you know uh, cover into the ch journey but how does we can exceed our expectations so welcome to you guys and that's why we are here in extract all of us together so we are definitely looking forward to you guys to come and take it certainly thank you so much rajinder i think that uh, also gives a sneak peek to vedanta's uh, um, uh, you know motivation to all the uh, students who will be joining as a professional uh, that we give a ample of opportunities for you to you know to have the disruptive ideas to put into action uh, so thank you once again rajinder for uh, for the for the answer uh, next question i would like to direct it to gorav and the question is uh, for the esg case study are you looking to make the current business greener which involves high cost without big tangible revenues in return or expand into a green business so over to you gorav so i think in a, if i wanted to summarize my the case study in a nutshell one line it's what should the metals and mining or natural resources company look like in 21st century right? and there are multiple uh, ways that we, we can dice the onion so to speak um and i spoke about that in, in my intro so look at that definitely and uh, we as a company are completely invested in the goals and commitments that we've just announced in ESG so they will play a huge role in informing how this business shapes itself and grows in the coming few years uh, whether it's the net zero commitment which is um, as uh, as you rightly pointed out it is a high capex uh, decision that vedanta has taken but i think it's important for everybody on the call to remember that ESG one of the thing one of the beauty about sustainability management thinking or esg thinking is that you're it allows you to expand your time horizon right so you're not looking at just what is the quarterly bottom line i'm i'm looking to gain there are long term advantages to doing what we want to do uh and keep that in mind as you explore options as you look to see uh how we even take our current business model forward so explore both but what i what i'd really be interested in seeing is what is the shape vidanta should take in the next uh 100 years right in the 21st century thank you around. thank you so much yeah thank you so much gorav i think uh, that was that was insightful and uh, i hope uh, our participants uh, 
their the queries are resolved and they have got the right strategic direction to for the, all the case studies and i'm i'm very sure that you know you all will be motiv motivated to to uh, to get on to your uh, you know solutions uh, i would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank all the leaders um, who have taken their time uh, to talk about the case studies and also to give us a sneak peek about vidanta uh, for any further queries you can just write to us and um, i would like to thank everyone for joining us today i hope you enjoyed this session as much as we have uh, we are looking forward to see you uh, at the grand finale wishing you all the best have a good night thank you so much